That is dead ass a New York thing. You're in the comments below if you're from New York. I've really been feeling the love lately, you beauties. Thanks for subscribing. And I decided I wanted to make a fun tutorial. Plus, my homie Box said some nice things and shares love for the analog side of photography. So this one's for you, bud. I'll, I also hope I said your name right. So today we're talking about pinhole cameras, how to make them, and how to get into solography on the super cheap. And those of you who don't know, solography is the art of using a pinhole camera to capture the path of the sun moving through the sky. First things first, we're gonna need to hit our local bodega and grab a nice cold can of Arizona. Bet, not sponsored. Now this step is kind of open-ended. You can get a beer too if you want. This isn't limited to cans. Any object that you can manipulate to have a pinhole and will allow you to stick a piece of photo paper into, it'll work. Shoe boxes will work, old coffee cups will work, whatever, experiment here fam. Be creative. Creative. You're also gonna need some photo paper. You can snag this on Amazon or B&H or your local camera store if you still have one. But keep in mind this needs to be photography paper. The stuff that you'd use in a dark room. Not something that you just grab out of the tray of your printer. Alrighty, we're gonna just set, set these down here. And this is probably my favorite step. We gotta drink these. I got my favorite Arizona right here. Commencing humor in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Actually, that's my favorite one, but this one was was good for that that joke. And hey, while we're distracted on this stupid joke, what do you think of my new YouTube set? I put this together on the cheap. I did an IKEA run, so all the lighting is budget. Uh, if you want to know more, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I can do a little tutorial on on that shit. Anyway, once you've emptied out your new camera, you're gonna cut a hole in the top with a can opener. We're doing this here so that we have a place to insert our photo paper. Watch your fingies during this step. I wouldn't want you cutting yourself during this process. Once the tops are removed, I'm just gonna bring them into the kitchen and wash them out really quick just to get rid of any of that Arizona residue. That precious Arizona residue. I had to borrow some pins from my, from my mom. Uh, I don't have pins and she gave them to me in this nice little, this nice little glass container so I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't hurt myself. You know, you know, mom's are, ow, I hurt myself! Now we're gonna jab a nice little hole with a pin into roughly the middle of the can. This doesn't have to be a science here. Finally, we're gonna make a fancy little lid for the can. I'm gonna make it out of black construction paper and I'm gonna be really artistic here. Now I'm a lefty, so this might look a little bit like I'm struggling immensely with these right-handed scissors, because I am. Once we've cut this up and manipulated the paper together, we're gonna gas tape the whole thing together and make sure that it fits snugly onto the can. This is really important. It needs to be light tight because if light is leaking in there, it's gonna mess up your exposure. You might pull out a piece of paper that's blank, nothing on it because it overexposed or you might get some cool light leaks like you would on camera if you were like lens whacking or something like that but bottom line don't skimp on the gaff tape it's not that expensive and you want these photos to come out there we go so now this is a crude basis of our light proof seal right we want to make sure we're not actually blocking the pinhole oh kind of wrap this thing up we're getting there it's it's taking shape not all shapes are geometric wow that looks beautiful little pro it did. oh my god Part of the set just fell. <laughs> I know you press subscribe for a reason on this channel. And just for me, because I'm gonna keep having this problem over and over again, I'm actually just gonna circle our pinhole. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of extra tape here and fold it over like this. This tape flap is gonna function as our shutter. We'll keep this tape on so that the light is blocked out from the paper. And yeah, we're gonna put the paper straight into the can and then put the lid on top of it. And we're taking all these steps to make sure that the paper doesn't expose before it's in the location that it needs to be. Cause otherwise you ain't gonna be exposed in anything other than how silly you are. So now our paper is in here. Our shutter is closed. Okay, and we're just gonna tape this up and secure it in there. Once the pinhole camera is in position in the outside world, I know it's a little scary, but we're gonna take the tape off and allow the paper to expose. So how exactly does this work? Well, it's really similar to our eyeballs. See, through the little pinhole that we created, light will filter into the can, exposing an image onto our photography paper. The image will be upside down, just like how our eyes see the world. And in the same way our brain flips the image for us and tells us what everything looks like, after we remove our photo paper, we'll bring it onto the computer 
and edit a little bit. Now I know we joke a lot on Sweet Lou Photography, but this is really important fam. Be careful where you leave these things, all right? We live in a society where people might stumble upon your weirdly taped up aluminum can and think that it's like a pipe bomb or something. So be smart about it. Don't get the cops call on you. I mean, who can forget about what happened with the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie? I wouldn't leave one of these on the Whitestone Bridge, you know? And the other risk you run into when leaving them in the public is if some dickhead comes by and moves the camera or rips the thing open, that potentially translates to months of exposure time ruined. And you heard me correctly there, I did say months. You can leave your pinhole camera exposing for mad long, B. You can leave it exposing as little as a day or as long as a few months. You could get some really cool burned in sun trails the longer you leave your paper exposing. Experiment with exposure lens and see what you can do. Once you're good on your exposure time, you're gonna go outside to wherever your camera is and cover up the pinhole with the tape flap that we talked about earlier and bring the can inside. Take the photo out and quickly pop it onto the scanner and then bring the files into Photoshop. Now normally I stick the photo back into the light tight can right after I'm done scanning it, at least until I'm ready to shoot more. If you pop it in backwards covering up the pinhole, you'll be double safe if you're you know, a little paranoid like me. The reason we do this is because if you leave the paper out in regular light, it's going to eventually expose and wipe away your image, which is sad, but it's kind of like those monks who build sandcastles and watch them get washed away by the sea. At least I think that's a real thing and not something I just made up. Plus we have scanners, dog. It's not lost forever. Anyway, back to Photoshop. We're going to go ahead and crop this photo accordingly and then we'll do a quick invert on the image. See, these photos are almost like negatives now, so the invert will help us actually view the image in all its pinholy glory. After the invert, I'll bring them into Lightroom for any little changes next. This shot was exposed for a day and these for a week. So I'm just going to bump the exposure up a little bit just so that they're a little bit easier to see and I'll also do a little bit of noise reduction. And that's about it. You can get creative with the color correction or split toning if you want to, but I really like the way these look. And uh, you know, th this should be pretty obvious, but an Arizona can isn't going to be a replacement for your Hasselblad. They're pretty low fi but I really enjoy this. It's a great activity to do with kids or people who are just starting to urinate in the great pool we know as photography. Or dip your toe in. I think that's what functioning people say. So hey, I hope you like this tutorial. Go out and make your own. I'd love to see what you come up with. Send your photos my way on Instagram and thanks for tuning in guys. Smash that subscribe and like. You know what to do and I'll see you in the next video. I mean who... I mean, who could forget? We'll keep this flap closed. We'll keep this flap on. We'll keep this... Fuck. Now, I know we joke a lot here. Now, I know we joke a lot here. You can... You can do this as view the image in all of its pinholy uh, glory. See, these images are almost like negatives now. So in... God, these... So, hey, I hope you like this tutorial. So, hey, I... <clears throat> Here. Here. You're... That's a dead ass New York thing. You're for. It's fucking planes, fucking planes, fucking planes.